Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with an infinite radical expression. It's not only infinitely radical, but it's also exponential in some sense. So hopefully this makes sense. I know this is kind of like an abuse of notation and a lot of things we need to talk about. Does this converge? So on and so forth. So we're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to use inequalities. We're going to talk about limits and we're going to arrive at something that is meaningful and legitimate. Okay, so, but let's go ahead and do it loosely first. So suppose there is a limit, suppose this converges and that limit is x. So suppose this approaches x as, x, as the number of radicals in approaches infinity. So if there are infinitely many radicals, then the dot 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 actually indicates that then this sum converges to x. But this sum contains itself. How many times? Infinitely many times. But we only need it one time. And this is the thing. Take a look at this. Forget about everything if you want. Write this in pencil and erase the rest. And take a good look at this expression. Isn't that the same thing as the original? Square root of 2 to the power, square root of 2 to the power, blah, blah, blah. Same thing, right? So we get a nice equation. From an infinite expression, we do get a finite equation. Well, equation, I don't know if an equation can be called finite, but at least it doesn't have the dot, dot, dot. So this is what it looks like after the placement. Square root of 2, which is our base here, to the power x equals x. And isn't this like so simple? I mean, come on, you can solve this by guess and check easily. But here's the problem. x is positive, right, obviously, because it's square root of 2 to the x, which is always positive. So x is positive, can't be negative. Under those conditions, let's go ahead and square both sides. Since everything is positive, we can easily square without introducing extraneous solutions. If I square both sides, I get 2 to the power x equals x squared. And x is positive. What does that tell you? A long time ago, I made a video on this equation. And thank you very much for your support. It's been viewed, I think, I don't know, more than a million times, I think. If I'm not wrong, anyways, I'll show you the link down below. And also here, you can check it out. But unfortunately, when I solved that problem, it was a while ago, and I totally forgot about the negative solution. But today, it doesn't matter because x cannot be negative. Anyways, go ahead and check it out. Maybe later on, I'm going to do another video so that I can include all solutions because I messed up on that one. But still, take a look at it. Anyways, 2 to the power x equals x squared has two solutions. The first solution is the obvious one. Duh! If x is 2, 2 to the second power is the same thing as 2 to the second power, right? Isn't that obvious? Yes, but there is another one which is not that obvious, and that is x equals 4. Why, you might be asking. Because 2 to the 4th power is the same as 4 to the 2nd power. And 2 and 4 are the only integers, now listen carefully, they are the only, only integers that satisfy this type of relationships where we have something like a to the b equals b to the a, where a and b are different. And isn't that amazing? Like, these are the only two numbers for which this is true. I think it's unbelievable. Anyways, I talk too much, so let's stop. x equals 2 and x equals 4 are the solutions. But you're like, oh, come on, this is an expression. If this converges, is it going to converge to two different values? In that case, it's going to be divergent, right? If you get a limit, like let's say consider the function or sequence negative 1 to the power n. Does this converge? No, it just oscillates between negative 1 and 1. But guess what? It doesn't because there are, its subsequences have two different limits, and that's not possible for a convergent sequence. Anyways, that's another story, but we can't have two values. We have to discard one of them. And for that purpose, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Bear with me while I walk you through induction, proof by induction. So we're going to show that this expression actually converges to one of these values only, and the world's also going to prove something else. Let me not tell you what it is right now, but here's the thing. Draw the line and buckle up. All right, so first of all, notice that we can describe or define this as a sequence, such as a sub 0 equals root 2, and a sub n plus 1 equals square root of 2 to the power a sub n. 
so that a sub 1 becomes square root of 2 to the power a sub 0, which is square root of 2 to the power square root of 2. a sub 2 equals square root of 2 to the power a sub 1, which is the square root of 2 to the power 2 to the power square root of 2, and so on and so forth. You hopefully get the idea. This is kind of like square root of 2 to the power, square root of 2 to the power, so on and so forth. So you kind of get our expression. And I believe I forgot to include uh, the one of the square roots here, so it should look like this. Okay? Anyways, because a, a sub 1 is square root of that. So I kind of messed up on that. So you get the idea. We, ha we get the same uh, terms, square root of 2 to the power, square root of 2 to the power, so on and so forth. But this goes on forever. So this is our sequence with the first term well defined and the definition is given by this. Make sense? So here is what I'm going to prove first. I'm going to prove that this expression a sub n is always between square root of 2 and 2. At this point, you don't know th that this is true, right? So that's a question mark. How do you prove that? We can do proof by induction. So proof by induction. Okay. We have three steps. First step is showing the base case. So first of all, notice that the, for the base case, a sub 0 is square root of 2. Therefore, a sub 0 is between square root of 2 and 2 inclusive. Right? Obviously, that's obvious. Now, for the second step, we're going to assume that this is true for a sub k. So we're going to assume that a sub k is between uh, square root of 2 and 2. This is just an assumption, but it should involve the third step, which is what? So here's what we're going to do. If square root of 2, a, k, and 2 are arranged like this, in other words, if a sub k is between square root of 2 and 2 inclusive, then we can kind of do 2 to the power of both sides, so 2 to the power square root of 2, 2 to the power a, k, and 2 to the power 2. So 2 to the power a k is going to be between these two numbers. And then we can square root both sides. Everything is positive, so there is no issue. We can kind of write it like this, and then like this, and like that. Square root of 4 is 2, obviously, right? But we can write this in a better way, like 2 to the power square root of 2 over 2. And guess what? This is a sub k plus 1. Why? By definition. If you look at the definition of a sub n plus 1, that's going to give you a sub k plus 1. We just have to replace n with k. So we get this nice inequality, but what is that supposed to mean? Well, 2 to the power square root of 2 over 2, if you think about it, uh, square root of 2 over 2 is greater than 1 half because square root of 2 is greater than 1. So this is actually greater than or equal to 2 to the power 1 half, which is equal to square root of 2. So let me erase this a little bit because it looks confusing. But hopefully you get the idea chain of inequalities, and this gives you what? This gives you, if you look at it very carefully, this number is between this number and that number. So a sub k plus 1 is greater or equal to root 2 and less than or equal to 2. Greater or equal to or greater than doesn't matter because as long as it's greater, um, it's just going to be fine. Okay? We're not saying it's equal to square root of 2. We know that it's not. For k values that are greater than 0. Right? So this induction shows us that, hey, if our statement pk is true, it implies pk plus 1, and we show that it's true for a sub 0, and so it's going to be 0 for a sub 1, a sub 2, so on and so forth. So as a conclusion, we safely say that a sub n is between these two numbers. Therefore, if it's going to converge, its limit cannot be 4 because it's squeezed between these two numbers. But how do you know, show that it's convergent? Well, we kind of show that it's bounded, but we're also going to show the next thing now. So here's what we're going to show. We know that a sub k is greater or equal to square root of 2. Then 2 to the power a k is greater or equal to 2 to the power square root of 2. And then the square root of 2 to the power a k is greater or equal to 2 to the power root 2 over 2. But 2 to the power root 2 over 2 is greater than 2 to the power 1 half, which is equal to square root of 2. So this shows, and by the way, this is a sub k plus 1, and this is root 2. So this shows that a sub k plus 1 is always greater than square root of 2. But square root of 2 is a sub... Actually, I kind of messed up on that one. How do you fix it? Okay, let me see. So 2 to the power square root of... Hold on, let me see. 
to square root of 2 to the power a, a sub k is greater or equal to that. And okay, let me fix this right here. Oh, I kind of messed up on that one. So we're going to take it from here. So this shows us uh, a sub k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 to the power root 2 over 2, and that is greater than root 2. But this basically means a sub k plus 1 is greater than a sub k. And a sub k is, by the way, why is that so? Because a sub k is greater than root 2, so I kind of have to put um, a sub k in the middle here so that I can show, uh, you know, that a sub k plus 1 is greater than a sub, a sub k plus 1 is greater than a sub k, which means this is an increasing sequence and it's bounded, so it is convergent. Therefore, the limit is going to be equal to 2. Therefore, our infinite expression is actually converging to 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.